accepted. Hey, welcome to the tech capital of the world. My name is Bobby Davis. I'm CEO and founder of Coder Foundry, rocking my brand new WASM t-shirt. Kevin, how are you doing today? What t-shirt are you wearing? I'm good. Uh, what do I have on today? Oh, I have the, well, I have the hoodie on today. The hoodie. Oh, hoodie. okay. I have the, what do I have? Right. Triple vision today. Okay. Triple going, vision. All right. Going all, all Coder Foundry all day today. I just thought <laughs> I'd wear the WASM shirt considering um, how much controversy we, we stirred up with our last video. So we thought we'd talk about yeah. it today. I probably should have thought that through and put mine on too. I just didn't, didn't think it through. I just... <laughs> You're at home. You can change real quick if you want to. <laughs> can I just, just run down and just put my ass and shit on real quick? Um, did I, I think I wore it. I think I wore it Sunday, maybe. So yeah, exactly. I, I wear it when we're not even on here. So I'm wearing this stuff all the time. Like uh, I don't have to be. But, uh, I can yeah. be on the streets. Somebody will see me wearing it. Yeah, the big news is um, Jack got Twitter quit. You know, he just resigned. Yeah. You know? I guess when you make a hundred million, you know, you got to do other things. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I think he's going to do something else. I know nothing about this. I have no insight to this at all. Yeah. I haven't read anything about this, yeah. but I'm guessing he's going to go do something else. Right. I would tell you, but I'm, I'm, I've got an NDA with him. So yeah, you know, you're not allowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. You know, he, yeah. yeah Jack is. Tight. But like, um, <laughs> I thought it was funny that some people complained about the move, like who they hired and that kind of stuff. And it's just like, you can't celebrate people's wins. You know, it's just really odd it, that people. It's insane. I saw some crazy conversation this morning on, um, on Twitter and it was a, um, so I forget the guy's, the guy's name who's Ooh. taking over, but he's a guy from India. Right. So right, yeah. It was like there was somebody celebrating, like, "Oh man, look, like this this guy from India and Sadie and Adele and all these Indian people that are doing super well." And I was like, "That's awesome." And there was one guy yeah. who was it was basically like, "Well, they've done these people who have taken over these big tech companies have done nothing for India." Like, what are you talking about? You can't celebrate other people's wins. Like, it has to personally affect you for it to be like a positive. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, "Dude, whatever. You should celebrate these people and celebrate the fact that they're from India. It's a big deal. That's yeah. like just." Celebrate the win. Man, I, mean, I don't know it. anything about the uh, the current guy taking over Twitter at all. I never heard. I don't of either. I've read anything about this when guy you at look all. at Nadella from Microsoft's background. You realize like he kind of earned that. I mean, like, oh yeah, it was yeah. a long a long career that he built out to where he put himself in position to be able to take over something like Microsoft. Um, you know, and actually transform it from what they were before to what they are now. We're a cloud dominant company and um, Azure and moving Office to a service-based ecosystem instead of you buy it once. I mean, yep. you know, pretty good. Yeah. So whether Definitely. it's from India or, you know, Oklahoma, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like, <laughs> right. obviously the right. guy's skilled. Not everyone can do that job. I mean, like, no, that's for sure. Not at all. So, so we'll see, we'll anyway, see what happens at Twitter. celebrate the wins, man. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. it's good when other people win, you know, yep. don't be jelly. Exactly. So, so. And, this is, and this is exactly what we were talking about. Kevin knows what's up here. It's all people to have to just their own personal feelings. But we've totally... Bobby and I totally talked about this right after yeah. we talked about the, the Twitter thing. I was like, yeah. oh, that's like, and we're like, yeah, so why? And this is exactly why. Well, listen, I'm jealous of Kevin's profile pic there, man. I mean, look at that thing, <laughs> man. You know, like, <laughs> I'm yeah. feeling, I'm feeling personally failured when I'm looking exactly, at Exactly, yeah. Your, Kevin, your, whatever, your get off the screen. There. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yes, you it's kind of tough. It's like that, it, it, it brings up like this, it enhances your imposter syndrome, right? It just yeah. it does when you see this thing. It's kind of it's kind of crazy what other people do. Yeah, well. it's it's so funny when I, I watch professional sports with people. I'm like, yeah, I could do that too if I was seven foot tall. I'm like, well, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If I was seven foot tall and worked for the last ten years to get to that point, I could. You, yeah, you probably could. Sure, you could. Right? Uh, <laughs> right. Like, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we should we should celebrate people's wins. Like you shouldn't be jealous yeah. over somebody else's like success. But unfortunately, yeah, I, I think, in this space think, as well, it's kind of yeah. I think being jealous of other people's success actually it doesn't inhibit the person that's winning. It inhibits you and your mindset, and you should have a positive mindset. So when you see someone like someone from India like running Twitter, you're like, dude, like I can do something like that. Maybe it's maybe I can do that. Yeah. You know. I mean, you know, so um, that's awesome. You know, that's and then we can go look at his background, see what he did, how he got there. What was the what did he learn? How did he I mean, he just didn't they didn't hire the guy off the street. I mean, he's no. been at Twitter for a <laughs> no. minute. You know, what I mean, like so 
he probably earned the position more than people give him credit for. Yep. You know, so. Yep. Anyway, congrats to him. So that's cool. I'm sure that's a yeah. dream come true. Um. Wow. Didn't like the thumbnail. <laughs> he, did we, he did like the get, thumbnail. Did we, did we personally offend you with the thumbnail? Um, <laughs> it's, like it's not the, the intent. <laughs> it's not the intent. No, <laughs> the no, no, no. Show. I think he's talking about the thumbnail for this video. The thumbnail for oh, this video okay. has the it has the JavaScript with the bit X through it. It's like very okay. You know, very I got polarizing, you. and we'll get to that here in a second. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about JavaScript. I do want to hear what your thoughts are genuinely, and we'll give you our feedback. And we're not going to be snarky about it so don't be afraid to take an opposing view we'll, we'll discuss them in a in yeah, a yeah, calm yeah. rational manner and give you our take so like if you've got an opposite take you're not hurting our feelings we'll still put it on the screen you don't yeah. have to agree with this we we, we totally <laughs> talk about this too it's like some people get very personally offended by things yeah. like that and it's like we don't like it no it's okay to ha it's okay to have differing opinions period like it's just yeah. okay you can you can agree to disagree on something that's okay um you know we're not calling you mom names or something crazy you know it, exactly. it's, it's like we're talking about technology here and we're talking about yeah. future like so the future what's going to happen in the future it's not like we have a crystal, ball, crystal ball or yeah. an eight it's ball or whatever guess. that tells exactly what's going to happen we just base ours based on history the way things have happened and then looking at the what's in place and it just looks a certain way when you start really looking at it so gonna, anyway I'm just going to take Paul's comment totally out of context here and just say, obviously, C Sharp is the best. There you go. I'm not going to talk about any of your other comments, Paul. Just that one. Yes. Obviously. Obviously. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Um, so what we thought we'd do for this is we're going to go through... Oh, one thing first. Um, we did put up a poll yesterday. Uh, yeah. Here, look. So we put up a poll. Uh, will JavaScript still be dominant component of web development in 10 years' time? 474 votes, almost 500 votes, 69%. So let's say 70-30. Yeah. So 70 said yes, yeah. 30 said no. So kind of interesting. You know what I would like to know? Um, what I would like to know about this, and this goes into my thought process on this. Okay. Of the people that said 70% of them said it will be the dominant component of web development in 10 years' time, I wonder yeah. what your age is. Yeah, that's interesting too. Yeah. My because we're gonna talk about that. Well my perception I is people I think, my age have a different view of how yes, this how the industry yes. kind of my perception is that skews younger. Yeah. And it's that because could be wrong. No, I, I think I think you're totally but, right. I think it skews younger. I think you have the same thought I do about this, that it skews younger because younger people have never seen a big shift. Yeah. They didn't see the shift from dummy terminal to PC. Yeah. Um yeah. they may have seen the shift from PC to mobile. But even then, it wasn't as big of a shift. It was big. It's just that the other one didn't really go away. So right. it stayed, right. They stayed right. around. So it stayed around. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. But the yeah. seismic impacts of that were felt like it's still the tooling changed and how we changed. CSS had to change. I mean, yeah. all this stuff is changing. Yeah. Um, it's just that you may not know it. And so it may not be your age. Maybe how long have you been in tech, coding and tech? That's, yeah, that's yeah. five years or less. You probably think JavaScript, you probably start out with JavaScript. You can't see any reason why it would ever change. And therefore, if it does change, you feel like that could be an impact to the way, how you make your uh, living. We call that moving the cheese, like who moved my cheese. Um, you yeah. know, so like there is like, literally a book written on it. Go, go, yeah, no, go like, read it. It's a know, very it's, short business book. Go read it because there's a good yeah. book about this. Um, but you have to be able to in life and in business and in technologies, clearly you have to learn to pivot because like, there will be changes coming down the pipe. That's that is a certainty that the yep. stuff that you do now will change in the future. Um, so we're talking about JavaScript, and will JavaScript be a part of that future? Our take is no. Um, and I know that's that's a hot take, and people have been progressing the the depth of JavaScript for a long time. Um, we've never said that until recently, because like we're looking at the landscape and like, okay. Yeah, cause, cause it's always pivoted change. itself. Exactly. It's always yeah. been able to pivot yeah. itself and, and do well, yeah. but yeah. So, so my first, yeah. So just hold on. <laughs> you know why you will have a job because you probably will retire in 10 years, man. It won't be because JavaScript goes away. <laughs> That's it. I'm you the only slub here working into my seventies. Yeah. You know, you'll probably be 30 on an Island somewhere, man. So let you know. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Here yeah. you go. Take my Scotland and Cobalt and Visual Basic. <laughs> you can. It's funny Richard, because you, 
I don't know how old Ridgerator <laughs> is, but maybe he's a little older. He skews older. Maybe he knows, like, yeah, I've seen this happen, man. It happens all That's the funny. time. So, you know, visual That's basic. Funny. <laughs> um, you could be one of those legacy uh, JavaScript guys, just like there are legacy COBOL guys, don't forget. There are people yeah. still still writing code today that make a ton of money. There's just very, very few of them. So if you can, like, you be there at the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or legacy yeah. Fox Pro or legacy Delphi, you know, right, like legacy right. Clipper. They, Everybody heard of Clipper? Like, you know, back in the 90s, it was big. <laughs> you know, it was huge. Yeah. You know, it's not a big deal. Cold Fusion, anyone? Anyone remember Cold Fusion? I mean, like, you know, so those are all technologies that just were here and then they were gone. Okay, so, so Patricia I mean, has yeah. a different view of this than we do. Says 99% of that 70 have been devs for more than five years. I just don't think that's true. I don't think yeah, that's true that, for, a, for a couple of reasons. Been. He says they haven't been devs for more than five years. I think he's Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you're right. Sorry, yeah. I mean, they have been devs. Yeah. Sorry. But you are yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, I would say that's true. I would say that's true. I would say that's true for a few reasons. Partly because, obviously, our, our cool. channel in general will skew to people who are newer yeah. in the industry. I know not everybody here is. There's, we have a, a healthy mix of people. But I say we kind of skew earlier rather than later. Um, yeah. So there's that part to take into account too. Obviously, it's Apple. We put it out. So that's one of the things to take into account. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's there's a few things there. Plus what we talked about before. So so I think we can just go into my take. If you haven't watched our video that we released yesterday, it was it got a ton of views. Lots of comments. I, I responded to all that I could. There was, there was a lot of them. So, like, I didn't and, respond and to all of them. We'll go over them. We'll go over the comments. Yeah, we're going to show you some of the comments we got. But I want to give you our case for this, like what we're talking about. So in other words, like if you're building code today and you're writing JavaScript or you're writing websites, you have to know JavaScript. It is the language that runs in the browser. Okay. If you look at history, we go through shifts about every decade. So from the 80s to the 90s, we went from mainframe to desktop to web in that time frame over that decade. And so Yes, desktop stayed around, and you could say that people still build desktop apps today, but pre-97, everything was desktop. Everything was a desktop app. And then it was like overnight, like where, like if you didn't know web, you were on the out of this thing, you know? And it's the same way with COBOL mainframe. Yes, people still write COBOL. Yes, if you go to any large bank in the US or probably around <laughs> the world, the main system is probably a mainframe running COBOL code, yeah. um, but um, that's kind of about it. There's probably some ERPs that are in COBOL. There's probably some other these big systems that are in COBOL that are hard to change. But any new thing, I doubt there's anyone saying, you know what, we're going to write this system in, Kevin? <laughs> Get me an AS400. Exactly. And we're rocking with the COBOL. Get me an AS400 <laughs> yeah, like, dummy terminal. They're like, sir, they don't make them anymore. Like, <laughs> it's just not happening, um, you know, and even with mainframe systems like COBOL and things like that, or they're running inside the bank. Um, when I worked at the bank, all of the development was web. It was just that they were interfacing to the mainframe through yeah. some like MQ or MQ series or something like that. And, and so like the whole front end is still web. Every app they build is web. And so like when you look at that, you can see this seismic shift in the way things are built the tooling that's built with, and then where are the primo jobs at? Which currently right now, that's web development. And currently right now, you got no JavaScript to do it because there's only one language really that runs in the browser. Right. Until 2019. Right. Which when they released WebAssembly. Um, and so if you look at it, 2019 to like 1999-ish, you know, I mean, like, or 2020, you know, whatever it is we're in, you know, it's, it's, it's been 20 years since something's really happened. We had a mobile shift in 07. Yep. And so now when you fast forward 10 to 12 years later, WebAssembly comes out. And I think that's the next shift we go do it. The other thing I think is really important for people to understand, the consortiums get together and they really decide these rules. Yeah. So Google is a consortium is on that board. Yep. Microsoft's going to be sitting there. Yep. Um, all of the big tech guys are in there surrounding the browser and go, how do we want the browser to operate? And you know, obviously everyone's decided to, hey, let's use Chromium. Google seems to win there, so let's use Chromium. But then they decide, well, what's going to run in this thing? And so once they decided that they got rid of plugins, which they hated plugins because of security and speed, and they got rid of Flash, and they got rid of Silverlight, and they got rid of all these things, Microsoft and everybody else went along with it. And he's like, you know, that's probably right. I mean, you know, I mean, we liked Silverlight, but 
there are some right. problems with plugins, you know? And so that's why when they came out the tech ed, it was just like, we're in based in HTML5 and JavaScript and Silverlight's dead. That, I don't know if yeah. people remember he saying that. The world exploded because people didn't see it coming. Right. You know, they were just right. like, what? Like, how can you do that? Like, what? You, know, you know how many projects I have in it? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. You're just <laughs> yeah, right. it's exactly. You know, I mean, we're like, we're not using it anymore. Yeah, we're not using it anymore. And so if you were a Flash Action Script developer, um, you either a uh, you either um, pivoted or you got left behind. And a lot of people I knew at the time that were doing that did not make the transition to JavaScript and they just stayed with what they had until they didn't have a job. Yep. And they weren't they aren't working in tech today because they didn't pivot. Yeah. Ex well, exactly. You can wait too long. <laughs> yeah, that's why we give this advice because I think we're about two years ahead of this, maybe three. But it gives you time to prepare to learn other skills and things like that. So it's not as painful when you're suddenly panicking and you're like, holy crap, you know, because I can imagine that what happened to a lot of devs was they had a flash site. Then the uh, company came and said, hey, plugins are gone. We've got like 18 months to do this. We're rewriting this right now. Do you want to learn something new? And they said no. And they just brought in new people and replaced them with people that could do it the new way, which was sure. just JavaScript. Yeah. You know, yep. and that's what I want people to understand. JavaScript also hasn't been here forever. <laughs> so like, uh, you know, oh, like, and, it, and, and, it, and if you like think it will be here forever, you're just yeah, dead, dead crazy. wrong. You're dead, dead wrong. I'll, t I'll tell you why, because no piece of technology is going to be here forever. Take, no. okay. So everything has like a finite window, right? We're talking about this like a few days ago. Think about the car, right? A piece of technology, yeah. the the motor engine. It's been around for a minute, right? It's been around for quite a while. Yeah. It ain't going to be here forever. Electric is going to take over. Engine. The gasoline engine is yeah. going to go away. And it's one of those things that you think is like a fundamental piece of technology that will be... If you'd have asked somebody 10 years ago, they would have told you that will be here forever. It's been here for the last whatever it is. 100 years going to be here for the next 200 years. Yeah. That's just not the way it works. And in, and in yeah. our space of technology, you can boil that down to even smaller windows of time it's there's, decade it's, it's about decades. 10 years there's not a piece yeah. of technology on your desk right now that wasn't invented in the last 20 25 30 years i mean yeah. there's not a piece your your I mouse and, your your keyboard is different your monitor is right everything's different yeah and then even the players that do this are different so like you if you look at recent history which is 07 08 that is our social media explosion. Everything that we use right now has been invented since then. So like Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. TikTok's like a baby. It's been around it's for like five baby. minutes. You know, um, and YouTube, all those things that people said YouTube will never take off. And here we are, Kevin, in 2021 on a live show on YouTube, like a live show right. before to do this, even previously, we like you have to use the cable access channel. I don't yeah, know if you had to be a T, you have to be a TV station. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. literally had to be a TV station. You know, and, and so like constantly this will change. The people that embrace change, that embrace new skills that are constant learners keep going in this industry and they can stay in it for as long as they want, as long as they want to embrace the change. Yep. Oh, cool. Thanks, Ray Carl. Super chat. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. That didn't come up correctly because it went a little bit over. Sorry, but I'll pull it up here in a second. Hold on. Uh, yeah. But thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you a lot. In Thanks a lot. That's kind of cool. Um, so just so I remember, I was almost one of them guys dying with action script. Wow, okay. Uh, that's what I learned the most. Keep moving with the times. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Move that's on, baby. I mean, like, that's it. I mean, you just move on with the things and say, hey, that's the way it is. Guess what? They See, the other thing I don't understand about this is, like, people will sit there and go, I don't want to do that. The companies come to you and say, hey, can you learn this new thing? I don't want to do that. And, and, and while I was looking at it, you're going to spend eight to nine hours a day working anyway. Why not do it the new way? Like, I don't understand. It's the same amount of effort, the same amount of time spent. And then you learn something new. I mean, I've always shocked at like hardware people that never want to change the racks out to newer hardware. Like they just don't work. <laughs> right. It. Well, like, it's like, it's like, that's the old though. If it works, don't like, don't fix it. Right. That's I know, but like, <laughs> that's the fun part of doing this. You know, like, I mean, the fun part is the exploration, the creativity and doing things. Um, to me, that's, that's the fun part of it. But there are a certain segment that are like, I know how to do it this way and I'm just not going to change. Yeah. So, 
trust me, they'll, then they'll, they'll surpass you because I, I do think WebAssembly um, or WASM is coming hard. Like there's only a couple of things it doesn't really do at this point and, and people don't see it happening. Um, I see a future where there will be a tech conference in the future, maybe five years, maybe seven years, maybe 10, no longer than that, where they're going to go, we just removed JavaScript from the browsers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, stuff does move on, obviously. It's not just gonna, like plugins. Things things don't always have and legacy I'll tell you support. why. Yeah. It's slow. It's insecure. Like we, we like the way WebAssembly executes code faster. And the ones that have already invested in WebAssembly and are already doing it that way, they'll go, yeah, big deal. It doesn't matter. I'm not using it anyway. Yeah. Uh, and so like, I, I do believe that's going to happen. And when you say that I'm going to script in the website for the next 40 years, um, it, it, you're just not going to do it. There's only two ways that you can really code in a browser right now. It's going to be WebAssembly and JavaScript. That's about it. And then you can call services and get JSON. I get all that. But like in general, how do I uh, interact with the DOM? Um, only JavaScript can do that right now. Um, how do I get information from the back end? I can do it through JavaScript or through some other call. But it's basically WebAssembly is a standard and JavaScript is a standard in the browser. And I believe in the future, there's going to be one standard WebAssembly. And then that way you can put compiled languages into the browser to run more complex things. That's the first thing that's happening. The second thing, Kevin, that we think is happening is the browser itself may go away. Yeah, that's what so people don't understand. Let's, so, like, let's, let's use yeah. this as a segue to this too. Look, so isn't Facebook basically using React for everything they do? No, no, <laughs> no that's just no. They're not. Just like Microsoft doesn't use you know their stuff for everything they do. So when you look at and let's talk about it, it's a great. Um, SPR spirit life, I guess, maybe that's yeah. what we call sport life. Yeah. I don't know. Spirit. Let's don't go know with what spirit. Spirit. Let's, okay. Let's all right. But let's go with spirit. Um, the thing that you need to understand is when you look at the next screen shift, all right. So you need to understand that we went from mainframe to desktop, to web, to mobile. Those are screen shifts. And when the screen changes, the device changes, the way you code will also change. We think AR and VR, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality type headsets are coming hard. And then we do know this for a fact that Apple is working on a pair of glasses. I saw more rumors over the weekend for 2022 as a date, more, more rumors than I've ever seen for 2022 yeah, as a date. it's coming. And I promise you coders, if you're sitting out there right now, the day that thing launches will be like the mobile thing in 07. And if you want to jump on the train, you need to jump on the train right then and there. But guess what it won't be? It won't be a website. It'll be something like akin to building a mobile website, mobile tools or whatever. It could be a brand new language and a brand new tool set. You know, I, I don't know how they're going to roll it out. I would imagine it's going to be something like Swift. It's going to be Swift based. It's going it. to be iOS yeah. and Swift based. Yeah. But the interface the, and UI parts may be different. Yeah. Say the that second much. thing that you need to understand is I believe this too, is that when you look at what Microsoft's doing and Google with Flutter um, and you look at .NET MAUI, they know this is coming. Yep. They 100% know this is coming and that's why they're building the tool and the way they're building it right now so that they can give you enough road roadway to be able to scale up so that you can build these new apps that are coming down the pipe. And I think these cross-platform development tools are the thing of the future. None of those really include JavaScript. If you look at Flutter, you can build things in Flutter, but they're targeting their own languages, Dart or Go or Rust or whatever. They've kind of kicked Java to the curb on that side. Then you have React, and then, yes, there's React Native, but when you compare it to the .NET, .NET MAUI and the other ones, it it just doesn't, um, it doesn't ring as as hardcore as the other ones do. So like it, it could win, it definitely could, but I do, it doesn't seem that way. Um, and so you're gonna have three vendors, Apple, Microsoft, Google, that's gonna push their tooling into the, in the, in the, in the marketplace. And then you're gonna say, is Facebook gonna be in that game? When their, their headset is gonna be Unreal Engine or Unity Engine. All of those are based on CPR. That's where they're going to be. So like I even see something like we're React Native. They might go, you know what? We don't really have time to support that. It's not really in line with our headsets or whatever we're going to do. So we'll just let the other 
engine providers support it and then we'll be a, a, a great integrator with those engines. And so like, that's where I see this really, really going. Um, but you can be uh, as dismissive as you want, but like uh, it's going to change. That's for sure. It's going to change. Yep. All right. So we've got any good comments. We can read some comments we got from the, the YouTube channel. I thought they were good. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's um, do that. Let's do that. Cause I'm um, wrong. I mean, like people are telling me that I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It created uh, it created a good, um, a good dis set of discussions. So here's the, uh, let me pull this out. Uh, hold on. Make this just a little bit wider. Not so bad. Let's be up here, but that's fine. Okay, so let's just let's just go through some of these and see okay. um, see what we kind of think about these. So, um, let's go down these first few here. So Giovanni says, "Agree, JS won't disappear, but its dominance will wane." Okay, I guess we can. That's we can what agree we're with saying. That. Just, I mean, just like other things, yeah, it's not it's definitely going to go away. We're looking at Web three blockchain and tools. They're not rushing to JavaScript, which is true, and that's okay. Not JavaScript everywhere. Let's have options. And not only they're not rushing to JavaScript, I, I think it's a different language. Solidity is the thing that seems to be winning right now. So, I mean, you're gonna have to learn new yeah. tooling it's and be a new whole things. new thing. Yeah, yeah, a whole new thing. It's not going to be JavaScript now. If you build a UI on top of your blockchain solution, if that's a browser then maybe you can still use JS in that realm, but your underlying um, blockchain solution would be probably Solidity right now if you had to guess in the future. But if we're talking about this like AR and VR thing, ultimately we're moving away from what we traditionally know as a browser, right? Because everything's yes. going to be, it's going to be some sort of visual AR overlay over something. And yes. here's the other thing too, I was thinking about this while you talking about that last section. Every company is going to want to have an AR app. Like every company yes. is going to want one. Every company. Like... Just like every company wants a, a mobile app or a responsive like website that runs on mobile, yeah. right? There was a point when mobile yeah. first came out that companies kind of dismissed that, like, ah, we don't, we don't, we don't need that. We'll just run our regular we desktop. We'll run our regular desktop like version of the website yeah. on the phone. It's like, well, that's a terrible experience. Like that doesn't work. Like yeah, it's that's just when not... media queries and all that stuff came out. Exactly, we and that, like, exactly, and that fixed that. that problem. So there's going to be that kind of yeah. thing to fix too. It's not going to be a website. It's going to be some kind of AR overlay. Everyone's going to want one um, to do everything. Because imagine we're talking about this the other day. Like if you're, it is Minority Report, right? It's the yeah. it's the ad serving platform in Minority Report is what it becomes, right? You walk yeah. this. So in Minority Report, he walks into the Gap, right, and he's like, "Hey, Mister So and So, you want to buy those pants you bought last week?" And it's like. Yeah. That's that can be reality with an AR yes. app. That can totally yeah, be reality. You, your, your, your glasses will have your location. Your glasses will know about your buying habits and where you like to frequent. You'll get um, personal coupon codes sent to you based on yep. whatever you're going to do. Yep. Um, I would imagine even that um, if they knew how much money you made, they may not even give you a coupon. They're like, hey, you can <laughs> maybe he can afford it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. You know, like, yeah. Or they say he's in here every week. He doesn't need a coupon. He's buying no matter what we do. But you get a brand new customer, you give him a coupon. Yeah. Um, so, like, I think those kind of ad platforms will come out that are customized to location, yep. buying preferences, and everything else about who you are and where you're at. And um, that delivering this is all bother. new development. This is all new all stuff. Man, new stuff all new development. And it's I'm a lot of telling work. you right now, that's not going to be built in JavaScript. Right. Um, it's going to be built on a server side language like C Sharp or like Java, like compiled languages in the back end and serving it up to a new UI that's not HTML. And if it's not HTML, what the heck do you need JavaScript for? If it's something like XAML um, or an XML based markup, what do you need JS for? I mean, like, you know, you don't need it. I mean, so that's what it was invented to do anyways, to manipulate the DOM, the DOM in a web page. Right. Well, if it's not a web page, what, 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 what do you need it for? And so like, that's where I see, uh, that's why I see it changing. Could they, could they make it work? Ethan disagrees He's with us. Sorry to I'm break it to me. Anyway. <laughs> well, listen, it's, it's okay to disagree, Ethan, Ethan, but you got to have a reason yeah, behind okay. that. You cannot okay. just say, you cannot just say it's not going anywhere. You could also say, like my example earlier, the uh, the the gasoline engine going nowhere. Yeah, Ten years nowhere. ago, not almost one hundred percent of people would have said that. But look where we I are think today. The better analogy on that is like horses to cars. <laughs> horses like black to cars, are like, yeah. dude, you know yeah. how many horses I'm chewing up right now? And then suddenly, overnight, seemingly overnight, 
he wasn't doing that anymore and the blacksmith went out of business now yep. did that blacksmith pivot to where he could bend metal and make wheels on on a, on a car right. probably he ended up working in the ford factory you know but like that's that's what i'm looking at now ethan here's what i would say this um don't base everything on this one belief that Joshua is going to be here forever make sure that you position yourself as a lifelong learner so that you can pivot quickly if i'm right well, if i'm wrong hey man just keep doing what you need to do about javascript in fact what we say in our video is what should i learn today obviously javascript, JavaScript. obviously that's what you need to learn because that's the way it's built right now what i'm saying is it will change the future don't be caught squatting javascript you know like you're a squatter or something like that saying i'm not changing you know get off my lawn don't take my javascript and then they take it and then don't be surprised when it happens. Be ready to move on. So what should you know in your tool bet in addition to JavaScript is a server side language like C Sharp or Java. Um, something that runs on the server side. And you're probably saying, well, with no JavaScript runs on, on the back end too. It does. But when you look at the performance gains that you're getting from .NET 6, the performance gains you can get from Java, compile code, it's just more superior, faster, it's better, it's type safe. There's a lot of things there that people like to do. Therefore, when this changes, they're gonna do it that way. And that's what Blazor is, and that's what WebAssembly is. And they wanna put a high performance language like C Sharp or Rust that runs natively at native speed in the browser so that they don't have to go through an interpreted dynamic language like JavaScript. That's all I'm saying is like, the the industry players are saying this is what's going to go there you go you just answered the uh, horse question in that part then. yeah I, I would say learn javascript you have to like it's not changed no, it's yet not, it's not a choice yeah this one, it really yeah, isn't it's a not choice. changed yet so like of course i can wait till it changes and make the video say hey boys it changed you need to like change right now or we could give you advice a couple years in advance to give you a roadmap and say you know what i do need to to branch out in what I know how to do so that can be more valuable in the marketplace. That's all we're saying. Be more valuable. Don't be less valuable. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. There you go. Okay, let me give you another analogy, Ethan, if this one doesn't work for you, because I think this is a weak out. That's the weak argument anyway. It's not going away because of political things on its own. The typewriter. Was there political uh, pushback against the typewriter? No. no. Same thing. Who's using a typewriter these days? Same thing. There's a million examples of this kind of technology enhancement. And in our but, world, what I would say world. this, Ethan, if you look at WebAssembly going into the browser, the, the big the big three that went there and said, I guarantee you they're saying, nah, we don't we don't want to do JavaScript, but we don't want to do that. We want to do WebAssembly. That's why they invented it. So there's your political pressure. It's the WC3 consortium that's getting together and say, this is how we want to write code in a browser. Second is the browser may go away because everyone wants to build a new device to have AR. Do you think Apple wants the browser to be dominant once they re release the eyeglass? 100% no. No, they want everyone to buy a pair of glasses from them. They want everyone to buy a mobile app. And that's, that's why they pushed hard for the app store and all those things to be the ecosystem that the way people consume information and mostly they were right. I mean, like, yes, we built a lot of mobile apps since then. It's just that we also built web apps at the same time because um, there were still two screens that are kind of working. But like the political pressure is just it's there. It's not the president or like a, a governing <laughs> right. body. But but if you look at the browser governing body, which is owned by Google, by the way, I could say Google if you look Flutter, at W3C, it's basically yeah. the big tech companies they have yes. the largest weight in these things so it's like yeah, they have this like brand and this thing and you think is this it's not it's just google and microsoft and apple and all these guys right. and, there, and there's some genuine concerns about javascript in general concerns are it's dynamic i know a lot of people some of the quotes were like oh you're speaking like a java guy you just think everything needs to be type safe i'm like no it's superior the way you do it and that's why people like it like it, it's can you make stuff in JavaScript? Do it all the time. Like, understand, like, I have to spell things exactly correct. Everything is untyped. I get all that. I understand how it works. I understand hoisting. I understand all, all the problems that you run into. There are workarounds and you can make it work. Um, but that is a, a choice that you have to make when you go to JavaScript. This is what works. You don't have to do that in these other languages. Second is just pure performance. And then, and then the other one is security. So like when you're running all your code in the browser, that's a security problem. 
yes, you can obfuscate it. I get all that. But like we know that that doesn't really work. So there's a lot of problems where people want to run something in the browser, but also in a compiled way that's fast. So you can build Photoshop or video editors or whatever they want to run in the browser, they'll be able to do it. And I think that's primarily the reason why this is happening. We've taken yep. it really, really far with what the tools are had. And now people are saying, what if I could do this? I wonder if I could do that. And I really believe that's where the big tech companies got together and said, how would we do that? How could we run compiled code in the, in the browser? You got to understand, it's not like it's a new idea. It's like right. plugins are here too. <laughs> like this is right. it's not like they haven't tried to do this before. Just like, yeah, we didn't like the way that worked <laughs> out. We'll we'll go to client side again. And then we'll come back to this later date when technology advances far enough to where we think we can do it. And I think that's what they're doing now. There you go. And, and I, I agree with you, Ethan. It is difficult to envision JavaScript going away. It is difficult. I think I think that's and I think that's why, like even on our poll, people are like, it's that 70 30 split because it's like, well, why would it go away? It's everywhere. But like I said, things things do move on and it will ultimately go away. It's just how long. And we think it's shorter rather than longer. That's, I think just, it's that's five really atty. Years. That's yeah. But when you look at five years, that's not long at all. Like it's like, okay, I've got if I wait and then I never learned anything else, then you know, I could be left behind or I've got to catch up at that point, which you can, you'll be able to do it. And it'll be this kind of slow ramp where it'll wane out and then suddenly it won't be there anymore. But the problem with ActionScript and Flash and Silverlight, it was like, it was stark. It was like, bam. Yeah. You know? Well, that's and because I know Silverlight I mean, Steve... just went out of support. I'm talking yeah. about people that just rewrote crap. I mean, yeah. like, they just rewrote it. I mean, like, yep. it's like, okay, I mean, we're Flash not doing was that the, anymore. I mean, Flash died, obviously, because Steve Jobs stood up on stage and killed it on an iPhone. And it was like, political and then everybody pressure. had an iPhone. And it's like, <laughs> political pressure. Big, and that's political pressure. So, um, so, hey, so doing it. That sort I'm of Apple. forced that. It was probably going to happen anyway, just maybe over a longer period of time. They did it because of when the iPhone came out, they originally, it wasn't all just security stuff. It was partly security, but it was also battery life. It was a new yeah. piece of hardware and Flash killed the battery. Like it just yeah. it killed the battery. So they're like, oh, we can't do that. So they did away with it. Um, and it's, I think... Oh, come on, what I was going to say now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I know, Ethan, it's hard to, um, it's, uh, it's hard to do. So look around at your tool belt, the things that you know how to do and make sure, you know, server side programming language. Um, will blazer win in this world, uh, world of WebAssembly? I don't know. I think it will. They're the farthest ahead, but I do believe that there will be a rust implementation that will be compelling. There's also already a C++ implementation with something called Inscripten that's compelling. And that's what um, Adobe did with Photoshop um, because that's the route they went, probably because all their tools are written in C++ and that's how they did it. And so yeah, like, and it therefore it was easy for them to push that into the um, thing. There may be some constraints with something like um, WebAssembly or a Blazor that couldn't do what they need to do, or they would have done it that way. But um, I think primarily, they want to run these high performant languages in Bla Blazor at native speed. That's all this is about. All right. So we've got some oh, funny ones. Is, you make, you make, Paul, you're killing me. You guys are freaking doing that. <laughs> Don't <laughs> freak out, man. Don't freak out. It's an opportunity. And uh, Abbas, you know how often we get this question? It's I wish. We, you would see the flag in the corner if I could get it. <laughs> No, I, I would be waving the Microsoft flag we right have now, the little Windows flag. Exactly. We have a, not only are we not sponsored, we have a zero affiliation with Microsoft. Like yeah. Zero. Zero. Um, Scott has been on the channel here. Scott Hanselman has I, I been met, on the channel I've once. I've met Scott, but I doubt so he knows Scott. who I am. He does so much events. I mean, there's no way right. he knows who I am. He, would, right. he couldn't but pick he, me out in a Starbucks where I could pick him out. Put that way. But, we've, but we've had him on the channel. That's as far as our affiliation with Microsoft goes. Yeah, I know. Um, I've met we, with some people from there. Um, I've, they've been gracious enough to I met him in New York one time at a conference, and they were gracious and nice and all those kind of things. Right. But, like, but, that's, but that's because we kind of – because we – we promote that product in a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, I've never seen bigger advocates than you guys. It's just, <laughs> so, so here's the thing, right? Bobby owns a boot camp, right? And yeah. could literally teach anything he chose. Literally, it's like the bug starts yeah. with Bobby. If he comes in today and says like, ah, oh, we're going to teach like Jamstack now or whatever, we'd be teaching yeah. Jamstack. Like it's that simple. No, the the thing people find funny is like when I started Coder Foundry, okay, and I had 
at the time early on in Cutter Family's life, we have business partners. I got serious pushback from the business partners. Like, you know, Hack Reactor's teaching JavaScript, right? You, you know that you're the only one in the, in the world teaching .NET in a bootcamp setting. Because we were very early on, our early adopters when we started. We started yeah. in 2014. Yeah. And um, I'm like, I know, but like, that's where the jobs are. So I'm teaching where the jobs are, not where what's easy to teach. Um, and so that's that was my whole goal. The day that C Sharp and HP.net and those things become irrelevant is the day that I switch to something else. Right. And um, actually, I you'll switch way before then because you'll see the writing yeah. on the wall. You'll have yeah, switched switch way before, before the day then. that you know, switches like, over. Yeah. Um, so you got to understand, my career started out. Um, I went to college. I learned COBOL in college, and then I went to the late '80s, and I came out as a programmer in the '90s, and I was doing something called Power Builder for the desktop. That's where I started. It wasn't with Microsoft. We were doing it for Windows programming for engines and things like that. Then I got to um, a company called Aon Consulting and then we switched from, we were doing Power Builder and then it was suddenly they wanted us to do VB6, DCOM and, a, um, and distributed COM. And I'm like, you know, Power Builder is better, right? You know, and they're like, well, this is what we're doing. I'm like, okay, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so like, I'm coding it up, you know, like I'm, that's, that's what I'm doing. And then in 97, it switched to a browser. And so suddenly we're doing something called interdev and early ASP. And we did also did JSP at the time. I switched again, you know, and then when it was mobile, I switched again. And so what I'm telling you is when you've been doing this as long as I have since the nineties to now, it changes a lot, <laughs> you know, like it changes a lot. There was a time when we, I didn't know JavaScript. I had to like, you learn all that stuff because that became the new thing that everyone wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what you do. Yep. Um, believe it or not, there was a time when we didn't have like, things like REST services. I mean, there was a time before that. I mean, like, you know, we had WCF before that. And then before that, we didn't have anything, you know, that kind Ridge of stuff. Ridge Raiders dating himself here. He is dating himself if you have power better on floppies, it, man. <laughs> there's, there's some people in this chat now that are like, what language is he talking? How about exactly. what, what is what is this like? I like, did Delphi it seemed like for two weeks one time. You know, I did Fox Pro. I did a lot of things um, that are gone. I mean, they're just gone. I mean, no one does them anymore. Pascal was the first yeah. programming thing I ever wrote, and it, no, Basic was yeah, pa then yeah, Pascal. Basic, yeah. <laughs> right on a on a Commodore sixty four back in the day. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Eli here says. I believe AR and VR will just be another gadget like gaming consoles, watches, PC, mobile. Um, and think about it too. All those consoles at some point have a browser. So browsers will still have JS. Hmm. Okay. I wouldn't call the mobile device a gadget though. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't call the... Uh... I wouldn't call the PC a gadget either, but I get the point. So the point here is essentially yeah. that these things that have changed the screen still have a browser. Yeah, but these are all, but you're only looking in, you're looking in one generation right here of, of yes. gadgets, whatever you want to call them, gadgets. You're not looking at a previous generation of gadgets. So prior to this, a dummy terminal didn't have a browser. So like the browser yeah. came in in like mid 90s. So 99, it's only, it's, uh, you know, 97 to 99. Yeah, old. you're looking at Netscape 4, Internet explorer three when yeah. you could actually have an actual mainstream. web page. exactly exactly yeah, yeah. if it wasn't um, with just modern, HTML. <laughs> yeah with html so like um it you know i do think they have browsers in them now because that's the way you kind of do it right now and yeah. that's that's kind of common i mean you know but like um it's just a vr glass an ar glasses won't have a browser as the way you think about it um Maybe, maybe it's just an overlay of Chrome and they, they just display Chrome in there. I just don't think that's going to be the way that information will work because that isn't conducive to that type of device. What's more important about that device is um, I have a pop up in my, my view field of view without obstructing where I'm walking or driving or I have a voice integration that says, hey, tell me what's on sale here at the gap, you know, and then pop it yep. pops up. I mean, the worst thing in the world that would be for that device would be, hey, tell me what's on sale at Gap. And it goes to Gap.com and Chrome, you know, and it's in a big browser right here. And you're trying to scroll <laughs> right. through it and see what's on right. sale. And we That's, may see some some early implementation of things may look something like that. Um, so right now on the so right now, oh, it's over there, but I have a quest, yeah. right? So right now on the quest, you can view certain apps 
on the quest there's 2d apps instagram being yeah. one right so facebook are gonna yeah. or meta whatever you want to call them these days are gonna push a bunch of their apps into the oculus right so 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 in there it is a 2d app and it's but it feels like it's a it doesn't feel right right it no, just it, it doesn't right. feel right it doesn't feel like it's native still, to the it's rest the of the quick stuff and dirty way to do exactly. it exactly it's the quick way yeah. it's an interim way to do it ultimately yeah. it's not going to be the way that you're going to view instagram on the quest it's not it's just or, not or twitter like i i can see you can have your feed here maybe your instagram feed over here and you can like you can swap them off turn those off right now i want to i want to mute that you yeah. know and then you can or it'll read them back to you or something like that i mean there's a lot of things that'll happen that i just don't think it's gonna be on a web page and the yeah. ones that embrace this are the ones that are gonna win and they're like eh, i don't i don't want to stick that up at chrome i mean like that's kind of lame um you know so like i think that's that's ultimately what's going to happen yep uh let's go back to some of our comments yeah so we, we, we already got one down <laughs> yeah exactly um, so we'll do some quick ones here because there's one down here we want to get to yeah. um so uh jorge here says so javascript is about to become the next action script what's action script exactly exactly so, yeah, yeah. We, we talked i know about that exactly <laughs> Um, uh, let's do, let's talk about this one down here. I think we might've talked about this, yeah. but let's see. Um, so Indy said JavaScript isn't going anywhere in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, mostly because most, so this is the, uh, the argument Ethan was making to, too, because yeah. most of the internet's running on it. While VR and AR technology will indeed use applications that you can only build in game engines, most of 3D stuff and most used applications, uh, will regular apps you'd see on your phone or laptop, which includes browsers. So the same thing you were saying. And those will work exactly the same, except it will be, an, oh, exactly what we're talking about, floating in a 3D, yeah, 3D, window. 3D window. I don't think that's true. I think that's that, yeah. that part does change. Um, web development will be one of the last industries to change drastically due to AR, VR, mostly because it doesn't need to. Same technology is used to create websites that run on computers and phones. Uh, you think that will use something else with AR glasses? Yes, yes I do. Um, the way websites are structured now is one of the most effective ways to give information to a user. My prediction will be that we will still be using JavaScript for AR just as an extra plugin to make sites appear as a 2D and 3D windows. This is exactly what we were talking about, exactly what we were saying. Yeah. I think this will be the initial implementation, but I don't think it's the long term solution. It needs to be. I don't think so it's the good one. It's not a good one. <laughs> That's AR what I'm works. saying. Like, I don't think it's a good one. AR works. If you when put it's a HoloLens contextual. on your head and you see it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't. And that's like, exactly what I was saying about Instagram on the on the yeah. Quest. It doesn't. It's something about it's wrong. It's not it's in the it's way. Not right. It's in the way. It's yes, in the it's way. in the way. It doesn't feel. It's not. It's not. Um. It's not part of the experience. It's in the way of the experience. Yeah. So your information has to be contextual. So yep. what we're talking about is just like back to the minority report thing. Let's say that I'm walking down the road and I'm going by Starbucks and I see like, hey, what's the what's the special at Starbucks today? And it's like it's already popped on my screen. and It's the special for today. And it's just yeah. it's not giving me the Starbucks website. It's not a version of their website. I'm seeing <laughs> that would no. suck. It's a little pop up that says, hey, today's special is buy one, get one free latte or whatever. Oh, OK, I'll do that order. No, I, and I walk in and I pick it up. Exactly. And I think it'd be better where the, the phone will remind you, hey, you're four blocks from Starbucks. Do you want me to go ahead and order that chai latte you like for you? I'm like, yeah, do that. And it, yeah. like, and it doesn't even come up on the screen. Like, in other words, like, right. it can be completely non-visual, which doesn't include JavaScript, HTML, or anything at all. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be a notification window that's, that's, that's over here, maybe, say, ordered, you know, that kind of stuff. And you just walk in there and you, you pick it up. Then think about this. You walk into Starbucks now and you got all these to-go orders. The thing that drives me crazy in Starbucks is the reason I go through the drive-thru is like everyone's touching them. Like they're looking at them like, hey, they're turning it like this. <laughs> yes. like, like, dude, yeah. that's so terrible. COVID has made it worse. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so true. like, um, you know, but now they can put little like, breakouts like yours is right here a little yellow arrow pointing right. in the it actually shows sky. you exactly which one it is yeah and you, and you pick see it, it up and like drink it yeah that's what i'm talking about and so you got to imagine how these things will work and then when you start saying okay okay that's how it works yeah i don't need javascript to do that i need something else i need there's going to be some other way to do it you know could i do it with javascript maybe um but like it's just going to be something else all right cool any other comments here in the on the show um here? i just want to put this one up yeah so, uh, Erica or Eric A, not sure. I'm going to go with Erica. You know, 51 year old career transition starting first day as a web dev tomorrow. That is awesome. Nice. Congratulations. This job is to get me started when playing a long playing. Yeah. There you go. 
I like that. I just, you know, Eric, do your research. This. I mean, we, we're opinionated about this. And like, I, I do think it's well researched. I do think we've convinced Ethan a little bit. He's like, yeah, kind of, <laughs> maybe. Um, and, and so I don't want I'm you not to here change to convince what you're you. doing right now, <laughs> but just learn a server side language like C Sharp or Rust or Java or C++ because that's, I think that's where the language, is, that's the, the technical skill that you're going to need to know. The languages may change. All right, let's see what else we got. Yep. Uh, let me see. I was wondering if there's another comment we should look at. Um, oh, this, this one was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, let's do this one. Um, yeah. So unknown said JavaScript has a tendency to adapt and evolve according to the demand yeah. of the market. And we, we've definitely seen that. Uh, we've seen this before yeah. and we'll see in the future case metaverse becomes the mainstream. JavaScript already has a solid 3D library like 3JS. <laughs> Solid yeah. is a uh, strong word for 3JS. So yeah. I do not agree with you that it will be replaced that easily. Uh, please don't forget that JS has the largest ecosystem currently. Yeah, and if you look at the response here, I'll just tell him, um, and it's from unknown, Unreal and Unity are the tools, okay? So like, there is no way that someone, like you can talk about 3JS and it's like, it's it's cool, but it's also not a game engine. I mean, like, let's be fair. Yeah, it's like, not in the same can, ballpark. Like, work one around. It's, it's not the same yeah, thing. Nah. Um, it's how do you do 3D in a browser? This is different. I mean, like, you need a full-on game engine to build the types of interactivity that we're talking about. Those tools are established right now. So we have Unreal Engine. Um, if you don't know, Unreal Engine is made here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, so like, so. <laughs> Epic Games, um, the fort, the creators of Fortnite also build the Unreal Engine. Then there's Unity, and that's Unity is the primary tool of the indie developer crowd. They have, for years, have been very, very kind of pushing that technology into the gaming space. And you only see that in games right now. And you're like, okay, games are, you know, it's kind of cool. But when you look at like how these things are going to get built in the future, if you look at the Quest, the Oculus Quest, it is Unreal or Unity, that's the way you build it. The language behind those, the ones that you use it to build it with in Unreal is mainly C++. They do have a scripting engine that uses C Sharp. Then on Unity, it is built with mainly C Sharp, but you can write C++ modules or plugins that if you need to enhance the game engine or whatever, you can hook into it that way. So that's, that's it. I mean, that's kind of how it's gonna build. There is no way that someone is going to build a JavaScript type game engine, they could, just because they want to do JavaScript. And then they also got to unseat these other two behemoths in the game engine development. It just doesn't seem likely, like the people that are making the headsets anyway, um, are going to support Unreal and Unity right out of the box. I mean, they would now, have already done it. They Well, they removed Facebook JavaScript would have already done some, Right, Facebook I mean, they already would have done did something it. with it. <laughs> yeah, so like they already took JavaScript out of Unity as a scripting language, and so like, They've, it's just not, it's not going to happen. So um, I do know that um, there's other types of scripting languages that compile down to C++. I get it, Lua and those kind of things. But um, I just don't, when you look at the two dominant players, and we're talking about the foreseeable future, when these roll out, that's how you're going to be building them. Because that's how they're built today. That's, you know, you're just, right. they just don't have mass adoption. Therefore, you think, ah, it's not possible, but no one's going to really walk around with a pair of glasses with contextual information and just watch Minority Report, just go rent it. And you're like, wow, that would be kind of handy. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't, yeah, like, and the thing is, it's not too far fetched from what we have now. It's really not. You could technically do it with your phone. You played the, you play the Pokemon game, yeah. right? The virtual yeah, you Pokemon can technically game thing. do it. Yeah. Same thing. You're just moving that right. screen in front of your eyes on an overlay. That's yeah. And then you do. carry, you carry the CPU in your pocket. Yep. That's how I think it's going to be. Yep. And it's the wireless communication for the screen down to your uh, your CPU in your pocket. I think that'll be the first thing you'll see from eyeglass. It'll connect through some kind of connection. I don't know what wireless. I agree. It's be. going to use an iPhone's power. It really yeah, is. The power in an iPhone is HDMI so high. HDMI connection of some sort. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And then you'll build a mobile app. If anything, that's the, the technology. Phone. Like that's the in, that's the the breakthrough part of this is the wireless mm -hmm. connection from the glasses to the phone. That's the new technology here. Everything yeah. else exists. It's not Bluetooth. I mean, it'll be. But we do have wireless HDMI in our office here, so we do it with uh, the yeah. conference room. This is more. This is like high bandwidth. Um, yes. Very very yeah. consistent. 
Um, low power, commu- high bandwidth. Low power, high bandwidth. That's exactly what it's going to be. And that's gonna, Apple's yeah. going to have to invent that. Whatever that is, it doesn't exist yet. So they're working on their implementation it, of that. What's their implementation yeah. of that? Because whatever's yeah. out there right now isn't good enough for them. Because right. if it was, we'd already be wearing the glasses, trust me. Yeah. We, we'd already have Which, them if it was based on And if you technology. really, really think about it, you're, you got to ask yourself the questions. Did they get off Intel because they just hated the relationship? They couldn't make much money? And they're like, we're going to build our own chips? Or did they say, we're releasing something new. We need our own low power chips to do this. Because when you look at the M1 chip out coming out. And the it's power difference. Power. The power difference between those and Intel is night and day. It is so that's, far. That's what they're doing. I mean, like they, they want to position themselves to be able to take this next screen shift, the next big wave. And we as developers want to be coding on these platforms. And you want to make, the last thing you want to do is make a janky, Chrome-based solution in these glasses because I'm telling you, your app's going to fail when you do that. The one that makes the truly minority report type solution is the ones that going to win. Oh, that's yep. cool. Look at that. I yep. can swipe it. I can do all this. Yep. Or you're trying to like squeeze and stretch the page like this as you're walking down the thing, trying to look at the web page. You know, like I, th- I think a lot of it comes down to. Not work. I think a lot of it comes down to it being the right information delivered at the right time. That's what it comes yeah. down to. In um, small chunks. In small chunks, a website doesn't yeah. really do that. Or a version of yeah. a website doesn't really do that. It's just. But could you sit down and read a book on it? Yeah, you can do that if you want to. Yeah, you can definitely do that. So cool. the other thing that That'd we haven't talked app. about is driverless cars, Kevin, where um, you drive, you don't longer drive the car anymore. And then that windshield becomes an AR screen as well. I mean, yeah, so that's exactly. another thing that already exists. You've seen heads up displays in cars now. But now, since you don't have to, if you don't have to drive it and it's safe to not ever drive it and you put a, a steering wheel in it. Um, you can look at iRobot for the examples like that. If you want to look at that, um, look at pop culture that's shown you that that yep. kind of thing. Um, you can see that screen becoming a giant AR overlay, and you don't need. It's not a web page at that point. It's right. You know, it's, it's different. something different. It's different. You're right. That yeah. technology is not far off. When I bought my car, it was an option. It was a package option yeah. to have yeah. have a heads up display on it. Yeah, it was kind of expensive, and I was like, nah. Yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> but but it was an option. So it's obviously what's kind of funny is that it's basically using the the angle of the windshield and doing a reflection of a camera, and using something called Pepper's Ghost to be able to do that. It makes it look like it's out in front of the camera. It's just a reflection. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of neat how it works. It's cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's get some more comments on the screen here from some of the guys attending them here. See what they got. Um, Anybody else getting? Yeah, let's see here. What else? I put up another couple of you see. Oh, here we go. Just yeah, I've, we talked about this a little bit, but Chess says this is a huge opportunity, yeah. not a threat. That's why we need to look at this stuff. Like it's not, it, it's not personal that you're like, oh, I'm gonna be obsolete. No, don't be obsolete. Just learn something new. I mean, like, and it'll be fun. Right. I mean, like, the other thing about these opportunities and Cheddar's on this is like, when you had the mobile shift, Mark Zuckerberg became a billionaire. Like before that. He's a college kid, you know, like trying yeah. to get a date. I mean, yeah. really, really, that's what he was. <laughs> yeah. And he had a vision of how this worked out. And he was right. But like, you can look at Jack Dorsey. You can look at all of these guys jumped in here with no market adoption whatsoever and became household names and billionaires in less than a decade. Think about it. Not only should this happen, I think as a developer, you should want this screen shift to happen because it allows us to have a reset where like, oh, oh, I could build the next big thing or whatever that is. You know, I mean, I could be the next Zuckerberg. And that that's the huge opportunity um, that we all have as coders because when these shifts happen, everything gets reset. You know, I mean, you know, it took Microsoft a good 10 years to adopt to get to where they're at because, and they changed CEOs over it. You know, we were in Adela came in and said, we have to change what we're doing. This is, this is Paul's <laughs> opinion, nobody else, not not slanderous at all on our part, entirely his opinion. <laughs> he looks a, he looks a bit like a robot though, doesn't he? I mean, I get, I get yeah. the joke, you know. He should definitely get a haircut, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, I think he's had his, so. he's had the haircut. It just is weird. That's, it just, you know, I seems know. like he could but, get, a stylist to come in with his money, you know. I, hey, I, yeah. what can you do with this? <laughs> exactly. I just don't think he cares. He's like, I mean, there's yeah. a reason Steve Jobs showed up in the same shirt and pants to work. Yeah, day, you right? know, if like you're a billionaire, you don't really care. You, don't you know, 
don't care. It doesn't matter. It's funny. <laughs> but it's pretty good. Uh, let me see what's going on. Oh, so, so, um, Kiranos, we don't. It, it's a guess. No, I, I mean, here's here's what we're saying. It's an educated um, guess. And if you've been watching us the whole time, we're saying that predicting the future is stupid hard. I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We don't. We're not saying that we know for sure what's going to happen. What we're saying is, if you look at history, every ten years has been a screen shift, pretty much, and it's oddly specific, like how that it, it changes every decade. Second, the change in the browsers already happened with, with WebAssembly being introduced yeah. in 2019. So did that 90, what was it, 94 percent of installed browsers now are WebAssembly it. capable. It's already there. All we're saying is once people start doing that in mass, it will shift quick and you should know how to do it. That's all we're saying. And now if we're wrong, you just learn something new and you know, you still learn JavaScript and the things you know how to do. Um, but I do believe AR is probably the other screen shift that we need to pay attention to, which is a combination of using voice instead of a mouse, um, and then displaying bite-sized pieces of information on the screen versus a giant monolithic browser. You know, I think there's also space for scroll through and read all the content, you know, while well, we're talking about control mechanisms too, there's also space for hand gestures as well. So hand gestures. The, so the quest kind of right now is hand gestures. Obviously you have the controllers, yeah. but you can put the controllers down and it recognizes your hand. You can pinch to do, you can do this. You can pull up a menu like with yep. your hand like this. There's all those things are there already. I think there's a space yeah. for that as well. You're going to look weird doing it, but it's going to work. And what's weird about it, Kevin, if you watch Minority Report, Tom Cruise's character actually had to put on a glove to make this happen. We've, yeah. we've advanced yeah. past that. You don't, don't need a that. glove. Don't need a glove. Yep. You don't need a haptic glove anymore, really, yep. to um, to do it. I no, mean, which don't. is interesting. It's pretty reliable. It's it's pretty yeah. reliable. It's crazy yeah. how it is. And we're talking about a headset that's like three hundred dollars. Like, yeah. we're talking about a consumer piece of technology you can buy today, right now, that has hand recognition and hand gestures. Like, well, let's be fair. The the eyeglass will be fifteen hundred dollars. Well, <laughs> so. no, I agree. It's not going to be cheap. You know, it's, you don't have the the chrome cheap. the chrome ones. You'll get the chrome ones on the side. You know, you have to pay extra <laughs> for the chrome ones. You're going to get the Project right. Red ones. There's going to be the, uh, you know, the, the purple ones you're going to be able to get. It's going to be yeah. cool. I, I'm in. Like, I'm definitely yeah. in. Um, I'll be in line if I need to be in line to buy them. I, yeah. I'm i sold on the idea before they've even sold me on it. <laughs> um, let's talk about this one last thing. How about ad pop-ups? Do you need an AR? Yeah, one? you will. <laughs> yes. Just, Hey, I mean, start on that now. I'm telling you right now, that will be a piece of software that will be a killer app. It's gonna be yep. like it's gonna be like Ghost in a browser, right? Or like ad block in a browser. It's gonna be the same thing. People will want to block it. 100 percent they will. Yep. They don't want the gap telling them, like, hey, come by and buy the extra pants. They'll be like, I don't want that. And you, yep. somebody's gonna write a piece of software that will block it. I think I think Comment someone's in. gonna put uh your personal information in a blockchain and then that blockchain will be able to be discoverable by the ad things and you can turn ads on and off on the blockchain so like you Hopefully. can um yeah so well no that's i think someone's going to that's the optimist that. yeah. you though so you because... don't leak information anymore that's the web 3.0 decentralization right. thought that's, behind all but that's this. the view that yeah. an advertiser is going to want to have as a consumer you yes. may not want to do that right like yeah. as, as a consumer, you may be like, I want to be able to turn it on and off. I should say the other way around. As a consumer, I do want to turn it off. As a as a, somebody serving the ad, I don't want to give you the ability to be able to turn it off. Right? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell the crowd right now. If you want a future idea, and you're looking out there, and you're in, in and you want to embrace this wholly, the person that figures out how to privatize private information and get paid for that is the next youtube so like the youtube right now is as content creators we can make our own content and then we get revenue from ads or whatever coming in here it's not a great deal but like you know it does buy tacos <laughs> um <laughs> so like uh but in general when you figure that out and then you can you can so um avatars subscribe to you as a person and then they can serve you ads that you opt into i think that's the next big thing and then you get paid on those opt-in ads which is kind of cool um, so it's just like YouTube, except for ad display, which is all YouTube is, is built is to serve up ads. Think about it. Right. That's all it's for. It's not yeah. about the creator economy. It's, it's a way to serve ads up. I mean, who made it? Google. What did they do? They serve ads on search. They're an ad like, company. Yeah. 
that's that's all they are and like they've built different ways to do this the next person that figures out ads will be the next google and you're like that can't happen it can't happen it happened in 1997 with google i mean like <laughs> right. it did happen yeah. they haven't been here since microsoft's been here way longer than, than google and apple neither one of those companies figured that out this other guy figured it out and won beat them both and now they're a trillion dollar company you think well they're not they're impossible to beat they're too big no they're not I mean, no one figured out social media. Facebook did. Yeah. Um, there was they nobody. weren't big. I mean, just a <laughs> guy. A a guy room. I mean, room, you figured yeah. it out. Yeah. You know? Um, so I, I do think these are opportunities for us to build the next version of whatever this is. You can call it Web 3.0 or Web 5.0, whatever you want to call it. It's probably Web 4, um, isn't it? I could see VR yeah. and AR being Web 4.0. I think that's yeah, the next. Is, and I see three being leaped by four. In other words, like it happens really quick and people don't yeah. realize like, oh, the screen's suddenly shift. Um, and I'll say this again, if you don't think it's reality, the moment they release an eyeglass, this thing is changing. And I think there's 18 yeah. months to two years before that's released. And I think it's kind of funny because people have kicked, kicked back on that and said, well, well Google did it. And where, where are their glasses today? They're, they're nowhere, they released Google Glass. But they didn't. They didn't really. They didn't release it. It was a proof of concept device, and it was ahead of. Yeah. It was too far in advance of where it needed to be. Like it was ahead of its right. time, I should say. Yeah. The idea might be great, but the implementation was bad. Trust me, Apple will not put out a device that has bad implementation. They just won't do it. Yeah. There's two advantages to this that have came out. Five G's come out. So when Google Glass, everyone says well, it didn't work. I'm like, yeah, I mean, how slow were the networks? It wasn't yeah, 3G it was at that point. It wasn't 4G, super slow. So it was it was before its time. Do you think Google has a glass in the works? A hundred percent. Oh yeah. Microsoft has one. Facebook's working on one. They, there's this Oculus, there's just the bigger headset. I guarantee you they've got a slim down headset version that's gonna come out. I promise you that's what every one of these guys in a dark room somewhere in the R&D lab are working on these things. And they're trying to beat Apple to the punch. That's, I guarantee you, that's like, Nadella is checking in on that thing every day. Hey, you guys doing on that HoloLens, man? Like, let me show yeah. <laughs> you. know, yep. I heard a yep. rumor that Apple's gonna release this in 18 months. Are we on schedule? You know, I mean, I, that's that's yeah. what's happening. But look what, look what happened with the iPhone too though, right? So the iPhone came yeah. out, remember it was like, Remember the phones the day before the iPhone came out? Remember what phones looked like? <laughs> like yeah. they had a physical keypad. It had buttons. When the iPhone came out, it was a giant screen. Everybody yeah. else then had a phone that was with a giant one screen. Button. Yeah, <laughs> with with one, one button. button. And I mean, people like, thought that was nuts. But guess what happened? Every phone today looks like a, a, the spawn of the original iPhone, no matter who makes it. Even that <laughs> fancy new S21 either. that you have that you just got. That's yeah. awesome. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Everything looks like a spawn of the original iPhone. It's like, yeah. so as soon as one person gets this right, everybody's going to have the same version of it. Um, yep. And I think Apple is a company that does that. I think they yeah. get it right. And then everybody's version of the glasses ends up looking like whatever there's their implementation of it. It'll be a different right. OS. Um, it'll be some version of iOS, you know, yep. um, we joked about it being iOS, E-Y-E. Yeah, exactly. I. Like, <laughs> I. <laughs> which, which, hey, Apple, there's a freebie for you. I'm sure you've thought about that, but there you go. So, but um, see, they don't they don't name it the Microsoft. Microsoft would name it E-Y-E-O-S. <laughs> and then they're like, well, what's iOS? Well, that's for the phone. Well, iOS is for well, the glasses. That's true. That's true. Makes sense, right? It really confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although, although Apple did just call their chips N1 Max and M1 Pro. So it's like. Yeah. They hired know, a Microsoft it, guy to name they, them. Exactly. So. A Microsoft guy came up with that. Sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> you, you know you're not good at naming stuff. There's no, this is nothing new. else name it. Yeah. We're not telling you something you don't already know. So why did we name it .NET 5? Because the number was bigger. <laughs> That was the literal answer. <laughs> it's not, not, not a lie. Even, Ethan Hanselman, li he laughed at that one. Yeah. It was a bigger number. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like, oh, okay. That, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, let's roll. We're going to do a, another show on Thursday. We're going to talk about interview questions on Thursday. So yeah. I put a community poll up. So if you've had a question before in an interview that you thought you did particularly well on or particularly bad on, um, go throw it up there and tell us what your answer to the question was. And we're going to talk about some, like what our answers would be to some of those questions and talk yeah, about and if you've been stumped you by an interview question, I'll attempt to answer them. Now, some of, um, if we put it on screen and I don't know the answer off the top of my head, 
but we put it on screen. My commitment to you is I'll go research it and send you an answer back. Ooh. So if you ask me something super detailed and, you know, like some kind of, how do you manage, I don't know, thread stations, you know, you know I may not so, be able to do that. Right so you're telling me not to put those ones on the screen, right? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Just pick the ones I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and do as many as we can. I can look as uh, smart as possible that way. So, like, you know, just, you just, you know. we'll just rig the whole thing. We'll try and do yeah. as many as we can. So, if you do have those questions, um, go look at that community post on our community tab here on YouTube and uh, put your questions up there, and we'll get as many in advance as we can. We can yeah, and then show up on Thursday. Um, if you show up on Thursday and then answer the questions, we'll probably take some out of chat too if we don't get a lot from the community post and seek. But we just want interview, quite real life interview questions you know, um, that you're getting, you don't know how to answer them. Those can be the softball ones that could be technical. Um, it could be a lot of things, um, just questions. Um, I do think that if we get a bunch of these questions from you as a community, uh, questions about the art marquee tag, <laughs> though, uh, we'll put them together and that, that way you can like, maybe the whole community can benefit from when you see these, because what we see from our end is, when I watch people interview is that the same questions get asked over and over again by different companies. There's definitely a group think that goes around and people um, wane, they wax and wane on different ways, but then they all see me at the same time or asking the same group set of questions. And so I just want to see kind of what your experience is and you can help someone else out by, Hey, I got this question. This is how I answered it. Or I got this question. I was stumped. I didn't know what to do. And I floundered. Uh, we'd love to help you out if we can. You hear me now? There you go. Yeah. I reset myself, Reuted. apparently. I had to mute and unmute right. myself. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do this on um, Thursday. So, yeah, throw your questions up. We'll be back then. All right. Good luck, guys. Keep coding, and uh, we'll talk to you on Thursday. See you.